probably one of the most common questions that we get um, on social media is, hey, how do I incorporate cardio or how do I continue to play this sport and not lose muscle? Like I want to get better at basketball or I love running or I love swimming. I don't want to lose muscle though, you know? And I've seen this before. I've seen people do this before where they'll go and, you know, they like to lift weights and they like the physique that they've built and then they'll incorporate this athletic, you know, pursuit and then they'll start to lose their, the sharpness of their muscles or they'll start to lose the sculpt a little bit. And that's disheartening because it's like, oh, I kind of want both. But if you do it right, then what you do is you minimize that muscle loss or that metabolism slowdown. In fact, if you do it right, and you do it really well, you can actually speed up your metabolism at the same time that you build stamina and endurance. You just have to be able to kind of program it properly. And the way to program it improperly is just to go do as much cardio as you can <laughs> for as long as you can. Right. Oh, it's exciting. You know why I'm excited? Because we have a brand new MAPS program. I'm going to give it away for free to one of you lucky viewers. One of you is going to get it for free. Stamina and endurance. The ability to go hard and keep going hard. When your stamina and endurance are high, you have the energy to train and play for as long as you want instead of stopping because your body doesn't have the ability. MAPS Cardio is a full workout program designed specifically to help you build a body that has an endless gas tank. It helps you develop a body that is athletic, mobile, strong, sculpted, and full of energy. Do you enjoy sweating hard, having the stamina to endure long workouts and activities, and not needing to take a break from active endeavors just because you can't keep going? If so, MAPS Cardio is the program designed specifically for you. Do you like muscle and definition, but only if it means your physical abilities match? Do you enjoy cardio, but are worried about trading in muscle size, strength, and a fast metabolism for endurance? MAPS Cardio's unique approach to combining the right kinds of strength training with the right amount of cardio training will do it for you. Get endurance, strength, and mobility all in one. MAPS Cardio is a nine-week full workout program complete with sets, reps, exercises, cardio workouts, and video demos. With MAPS Cardio, you will get everything you need to help you achieve new levels with your body and performance. MAPS Cardio focuses on endurance-based workouts and programming, meaning you will gain new levels of stamina all done right so you don't lose muscle or strength. If you want crazy endurance, stamina, and muscle, MAPS Cardio is the perfectly programmed workout for you. So many messages from people who are like, how do I build cardio endurance? How do I build stamina without losing muscle? Don't want to slow my metabolism down. I want to get better at my favorite sport. I want to get better at my favorite outdoor activity, or I just like to do cardio type activity. How do I do that? What do I do? Well, we answered the call. We have created a brand new program called MAPS Cardio. I'm going to give it away for free to one of you lucky viewers. One of you is going to get it for free. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel um, and click on notifications. Do all those things. And if we like your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to MAPS Cardio. Now, everyone else, it's a brand new launch. So that means we got some free goodies and we got some discounts. So here's what it is, right? So MAPS Cardio is going to retail at $117. Right now, it's only $77. Plus, we're going to throw in some free stuff. We have an ebook that we're going to sell for $47 called How to Boost Your VO2 Max. We have another ebook that's called How to Eat for Performance. So this is a nutrition-based one for performance. That one's also going to be $47 for free. We're going to give those for free with the launch. So Maps Cardio 77 bucks plus you get those two ebooks totally for free, okay? Now this launch ends July 3rd, so you're going to have to act kind of quickly. Uh but here's what you do if you want to sign up, go to mapscardio.com and then use the code cardio special with no space all one word for that discount. All right? Here comes the show. Cardio can be an effective way to work out. If you do it right, you do it wrong, you end up slowing your metabolism down and losing muscle. I thought you were part of Team No Cardio. Yeah, I know. No, we need <laughs> no to address sweat. that. No, we need to address that because uh, we get that. Sometimes people attach that to us. Totally not true. When we talk about cardio, we often talk about the people that overdo it, that make that the foundation of the workout, uh, especially when it comes to weight loss and how it can be a very ineffective tool if used improperly. Which just so happens to be 90% of the people. That Correct. Use it. Be because mainstream is <laughs> yeah. true. Because mainstream advice when it comes to weight loss is go do as much cardio as you can, burn lots of calories. Terrible advice. And we've talked about this in a, a million times on the podcast, but it can send a signal to the body to make it more efficient with calories. It pairs muscle down um, and eventually plateau. And then it makes it 
much more challenging to maintain the fat loss. And so, and look, you lose muscle with fat, you end up smaller, but the same body fat percentage, you end up a small, you know, smaller, same flabbiness version of yourself. So what I want to do is I want to talk about cardio, how to do cardio, reap the benefits, minimize or negate the potential negatives, right? So how do you keep muscle? How do you keep your metabolism fast and then gain the benefits of, of, of cardio training? Well, yeah, because I think one of the things that has been misunderstood is that I think when we advocate for strength training first and focusing on that and we tell people that we normally would tell them don't do cardio right now that people assume that we don't recognize all the benefits of doing cardio right like i we we do absolutely recognize the the benefits that come from doing cardio mm -hmm. and how, how and all the studies that support how good it is for your heart i i understand that but when you when we deal with clients average people most everybody that comes to us is trying to change body composition. They either want mm -hmm. to build muscle or they want to burn body fat or they just want to get in overall shape or healthier and starting your approach right out the gates with cardio and be, being cardio focused because that's what they've been taught. It's or just told not to do. the best tool for a fat loss uh, direction. Right? right. And that's just the, the main point is because that's in out there uh, in the general population, that's how they still think and approach it that way. Uh, but there's lots of benefits to cardio and lots of different ways to apply cardio in your training that will lift up your program. Look, I'll tell you what, if mainstream thought lifting weights was the best way to get in great shape and they'd got to go to the gym and just lift as hard as possible or whatever and throw weights around, then a lot of our podcasts will be talking about why you should, shouldn't lift weights in the wrong way or why you should use that tool in an effective way, but it just so happens to be opposite. Nobody's encouraged to go do strength training. Everybody's encouraged to move as much as possible. And so it's a tool that is utilized in effectively and appropriately. And that's what we, what I want to address is how do I take this tool, which can have tremendous benefits for health. It's fun. Here's the other thing that we, we've talked about before. People, some people love that. They love the feeling of stamina and endurance. Mm -hmm. And and I totally can understand that. There were times in my life, when, especially when I was competing in jiu-jitsu or judo, where I, get, I got that feeling of having this crazy gas tank. And so it can be very exhilarating, especially if you're an athlete or you enjoy doing those kinds of activities. So there's tremendous benefit. You just got to do it right. Mm -hmm. So I think let's, let's start with the first thing, which is, and again, we're addressing the average person who wants to be very fit who likes having athletic performance, isn't trying to lose muscle. They want to have a fast metabolism so that they can eat more and it's easier to sustain, you know, of course, because food is so accessible um, and, and tasty, right? So the first thing is that building muscle and strength should still be the foundation. So if you want to, if you want to incorporate lots of cardio or use cardio as a way to burn calories or improve your health or boost your stamina, you still want to make some strength training the foundation because that's what's going to maintain strength and muscle and counter the potential for cardio to tell your body to pare muscle down to become more efficient at calorie burning, which you don't want. Yeah, it, it elongates um, the, the ability to uh, weather a lot of the repetitive stress because the repetitive stress of cardiovascular training, it adds up over time uh, with joint pain, with dysfunction, and to be able to apply a good foundational strength uh, and, and support system uh, from the very beginning is something that's going to keep you doing what you love to do if, you, if cardio really is something that you're going to be doing uh, indefinitely, like this is something you really need to focus on strength to be able to support your body in those pursuits. Well, so I want you to explain more in depth what you kind of just went over real quick, which is the, the metabolic side of it. Cause that's in my opinion, the most important thing to cover and the thing that's misunderstood the most, yeah. right? There's this idea that, okay, well, why wouldn't I do both then? Why wouldn't I not just strength train and do cardio? I get the benefits of strength training, right? Like you keep guys yeah. advocating for, but then I also want the things that you're saying that cardio provides for me. So why would I not do both? And why would you focus first on strength training? And why is that so important when we're talking about the metabolism? Yeah, well, you can, so I do want to be clear, you can do both. You just have to do it right. And so what Adam's referring to, so Whenever you do a form of exercise, the reason why your body gets better at that form of activity or exercise is because it's a stress. So it's, a, it's hard. It's a stress on the body. And what your body's trying to do is get better at that particular stress. If I push cardio too much, if that becomes the foundation of my routine, um, my body's going to look, it's really going to prioritize getting better at cardio. And the way it does is boosting endurance, which is not a bad thing. That's great. But also my body's trying to learn how to burn less calories 
while doing that activity because cardio is a very calorie intensive form of exercise. No form of exercise burns as many calories in 30 minutes or an hour as intense cardio, nothing, right? So my body wants to become more efficient. Plus I don't need much strength. Traditional cardio type activities don't require a lot of strength. Long distance running, cycling, long distance swimming. Like you need some strength, but you need little strength actually. Really what you need is a lot of stamina. So my body says, all right, let's make this more, let's make this body more efficient. And what it does is it pairs muscle down. So when you look at studies where they combine calorie deficit, meaning low calories, in combination with just cardio, you see a lot of weight loss, but then when they break down the weight loss, you end up with a significant amount of muscle loss. You don't want to do that, right? You don't want to lose 10 pounds and five of it be muscle because what you've done now is you've ended up with a slower metabolism, which means maintaining that new body weight is going to be more challenging or losing even more body weight is even more challenging. And, you know, half of it muscle, half of it body fat, you essentially are almost the same body fat percentage. You're just less strong and you burn less calories. Not really a good trade. So, and by the way, making uh, muscle and strength the foundation doesn't necessarily mean that you need to lift weights more than you do cardio. What mm -hmm. it means is you need to place special focus on the strength training and make sure that you maintain or build strength along with this. Because I've trained uh, endurance athletes, many endurance athletes, uh, triathletes. I trained an Ironman athlete one time. And we only did strength training once a week and maybe some mobility stuff on the side. And I would use the strength training as a gauge. Like, uh oh, we're getting really weak on our strength training. Right. So that's what I mean by the foundation. Mm -hmm. And when the strength training was good, boy, everything else was great. When the strength training was bad, you would see it, the person suffer across the board. So that's more specifically what we mean when we say building muscle and strength should be the foundation, especially if you're not this high level endurance athlete. And your goal is, look, I want stamina and endurance and I want to get lean and I want to be able to maintain it forever. Well, then it's even more important because you want that fast metabolism. Such a great point too, uh, of course, for the metabolism, but also uh, the point you made about being able to measure the success that I'm having currently with my my cardio routine yeah. is if my goal is I want to add cardio to get the benefits from it, but at the same time too, I don't want to lose muscle. I won't be able to really gauge that if I hadn't first built a solid foundation of lifting consistently. Right. So I know what a, a a good bench press looks for me, what a good squat looks like for mm -hmm. me. If like, and then now I can go like, okay, this is my baseline. I want to start to introduce cardio here. My goal is I want to start to introduce cardio while I have this solid base of weight training. And what I don't want to see is me to get weaker in the gym. Mm -hmm. Can I start to add this and so the cardio actually benefits my weight training. Can I actually either maintain my strength or even potentially get stronger in mm -hmm. the gym without losing all this muscle? And I think that's uh, the the laying the foundation first. That's why that's so important because how are you going to be able to measure that if you kind of throw everything out at once? Totally. And and that brings me to another point, which is uh, you know we you'll hear sometimes in fitness circles people will use the word conditioning instead of using the word endurance. Mm -hmm. Most people, now, unless you're a specific type of athlete, like um, you're just trying to you know, do, be long distance runner, or you, know, you wanna run or, or cycle for 100 miles or whatever, most people are more interested in conditioning and not necessarily that long kind of endurance. So what I mean by that is the average person loves the fact that they could play hard, work hard, go to the park, run, cycle, do all these different activities, and have the conditioning to just have this great gas tank versus just run for three hours, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, without stopping type of deal. Conditioning is a little bit different than endurance. Conditioning requires more strength. It requires uh, more stability. It's uh, more multifaceted. More speed. Yeah, more speed. It's more athletic, yeah. right? It's more athletic than just endurance. And conditioning work is phenomenal for that kind of stamina and endurance versus, because you can build endurance by just, getting better at running slow for long distance, mm -hmm. or you can build endurance by being able to do sled work and some plyo work and shorter rest periods and, yep. you know, compound, you know, type exercises or circuits that'll build that conditioning type of stamina, which most people are more interested in, right? This is where, yeah, you, like you mentioned circus you, circuits, you'll, you'll tend to see a lot more of those because of the shorter bouts. And, and this is, very translatable to a lot of different sports because you only get uh, brief intervals where you're exerting max effort and, mm -hmm. and you need to move really quickly and that's really exhausting, but you also need a good gas tank. You need some uh, to be able to endure that. Uh, and you can, you can mimic that 
uh, quite effectively in, in that kind of a setting with uh, circuit training or these uh, short bouts of, in sprints. Yeah. I've, al I've also thought it, I've always thought it was more functional uh, than like long endurance totally. too. Like when you think about like it, all the things, the times that you may have to uh, exert like a bunch of in, you know uh, energy like this or to have any sort of endurance whatsoever, like the short explosive bouts are going to be more realistic of what you are going to call upon than like what you're going to have to go for a two hour run. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not realistic. Like let's say your dog just takes off right. leash and I got to go that's get what him I mean. before. Yeah. Or that's, do some yard work. Yeah. Or, or playing like with your kids. Yeah. Or, I mean, there's a, a ton of examples of when you're going to need these bursts of, of energy and be able to do that on, on demand uh, it versus uh, how often will I have to just take off for two hours and, and sustain a two hour run, right? That's, I think yeah. it's more functional to be training this way. Yeah. Most people who are interested in this are interested in being able to, on the weekend, go do long hikes and swims and rock climb. And these are people who are very active and like to be able to do multiple things and different things. Um, and that's the conditioning. That's what we refer to when we talk about conditioning. And by the way, um, one of the best ways to measure some of this stuff is, is what's called VO2 max. A lot of people aren't familiar. I mean, fitness enthusiasts know what this is, but, and, or maybe I'd say most people have heard this, but they don't know what that means. VO2 max really represents the amount of oxygen that your body absorbs and utilizes when you're exerting, when you're exerting yourself, when you're working out, the better that is, the better your stamina is, right? So when you can utilize more oxygen, more effectively, you just basically build a, a more effective, uh, you know, stamina and endurance machine and um, improving VO2 max, a lot of different ways to do this. One way is to build more muscle. Automatically, you're going to improve your VO2 max by being stronger and building more muscle. And by the way, this is why you maybe heard me on the podcast say that strength is the uh, kind of the, the foundational physical pursuit because of all pursuits of all, because if I take, and I've done this with, with endurance athletes, I've taken endurance athletes and they're like, Hey, I want to get faster in my marathon time. And I just improve their strength by 15% in the gym. And they see this boost in endurance versus having to push, you know, longer runs type of deal. So that's one way to do it. And then of course the other way is traditional endurance type training, cardio conditioning type work. But when that goes up, your stamina goes up and you just, it's basically, you can just go for longer and you have this kind of bigger gas tank. Well, what's great about, you know, talking about the VO2 max too, it's, you know, this is something that you can improve really quick versus uh, how long it takes to uh, build your metabolism up or build muscle. Like another reason, it just highlights another reason why we always talk about strength being the the foundation first mm -hmm. is because it is, it's, it's much more difficult to build lots of strength, build lots of muscle, speed up your metabolism, but actually manipulating your VO2 max is actually really easy in comparison to that. This is why you see like in high school and even like college sports, they have what are called like hell weeks where it's like just one week where yeah. they do like hardcore conditioning right before the season. And then now they're like in season already expected to play their sport. It's not like they had to do that for six months leading up to that. Like if you're getting ready for being as strong as you possibly can or a bodybuilding show, I'm going to build this physique. Like that takes months and years to build that physique or get that kind of strength to compete at the highest level. But you could actually get in, in really good sport condition relatively quick because of how fast you can manipulate yeah. your VO2. Now max. I do want to caution people that if you do this wrong, you end up what we talked about uh, earlier in the episode, which is where you start to pare muscle down. Mm -hmm. And this is where the challenge is, right? Because, and one of the best, I, I, I think probably one of the most common questions that we get um, on social media is, hey, how do I incorporate cardio or how do I continue to play this sport and not lose muscle? Like I want to get better at basketball or I love running or I love swimming. I don't want to lose muscle though, you know? And I've seen this before. I've seen people do this before where they'll go and, you know, they like to lift weights and they like the physique that they've built. And then they'll incorporate this athletic, you know, pursuit. And then they'll start to lose their, the sharpness of their muscles or they'll start to lose the sculpt a little bit. And that's disheartening because it's like, oh, I kind of want both. Now, of course, you can't have perfect both. But if you do it right, then what you do is you minimize that muscle loss or that metabolism slowdown. In fact, if you do it right, you do it really well, you can actually speed up your metabolism at the same time that you build stamina and endurance. You just have to be able to kind of program it properly. And the way to program it improperly is just to go and do as much cardio as you can for as long as you can. Right. That's the wrong way to do it. You want to program it similar to how you would program strength training where there's a sets and reps and there's a tempo and a way to kind of, you know, uh, you know, put your program together to get your body to do what you want 
versus I'm just going to go as long as I can and tell my body, hey, let's, you know, let's, let's lose some muscle. One way to do this is with something called HIT cardio, so high intensity interval training. And I remember when, uh, and this was all in our, during our earlier careers as personal trainers, I remember the studies came out on HIT cardio, it blew everybody's mind. Because mm -hmm. at that time, if you were in a gym in the late 90s, early 2000s, and you wanted to burn body fat, the way to do it cardio-wise was to get on the elliptical, get on the treadmill, get on the bike, and just go. Mm -hmm. You know, 40 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, go, 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 go. Out come these studies showing that these 15-minute high-intensity interval training-based cardio workouts were burning as much or more body fat than these longer sessions. And then they concurrently showed a less of a muscle loss effect. In some studies actually showed a little bit of a muscle building effect. Right. Blew everybody's mind. Yeah, much more of a muscle preserving sort of effect to that. And um, yeah, this is, of course, people were drawn to it too because of the time length, because yeah. now I can do just this little bit that has you know quite a bit of an effect on being able to uh, lose uh, body fat and, and be able to kind of get my composition where I want it to be. Uh, however, this is this is a bit more of an advanced uh, type of method where uh, we are exerting uh, max effort. So this is high intensity, meaning it's it's it, you are going to uh, more of a max situation where we're trying to exert as much effort as possible. So it has to be really structured in a way that is uh, minimizing the risk, but also like uh, being able to perform it uh, correctly and uh, without basically sloppy form. Well, this is the order that, um, okay, obviously when I'm getting ready for a show, I'm going to introduce at one point cardio and utilize that as a tool. Cause it is a nice tool to get lean, right. And, and to get ready for getting on stage. Uh, but this is the first way that I introduce cardio is hit. And the, the, the theory for me is like, okay, this is the, the least amount of time that I have to spend in the gym to get the most bang for my buck and risk the least amount of potential muscle loss, yep. which is so important when I'm getting on stage. When I'm getting on stage, I have to present the most muscular lean physique that I can. So I don't want it to, to I don't want to start cart, which is blows my mind when I still see this with these coaches that start these athletes with cardio 12 weeks out from the show. And they're doing this steady state hour long cardio right away. It's like, what are you doing? Like you, that early on for that long, like you, they literally worked their ass off to build maybe what three to five pounds in the off season mm -hmm. of muscle. Mm -hmm. The thought that you think you're going to hang on to that starting that much cardio already that early in the program, you're crazy. I would, I would want to manipulate diet and, and weight training as much as I can before I introduce cardio. And then when I do introduce cardio, I want it to look like this. I want it to be 15 minutes. 15 minutes, not even every single day, a few days, and then I ramp it up to eventually every day. And then I start adding other forms of cardio before I get there, before I get ready for stage. But I don't want to be doing that for an extended period of time or doing a bunch of cardio first because I care so much about hanging on to muscle. Yeah. So to give an example, and this is this needs to be individualized because it could be different from person to person somewhat, but to give you an example of a difference between a hit cardio session and a traditional cardio session. So traditional, I'm on a stationary bike. And I just ride at the same speed for, I don't know, 45 minutes, right? Hit would be more like I do a 15-second sprint, and then I do, let's say, like a like a 45-second slow pace. Allow my heart rate to slow back down. Yeah, you I, undulate your effort in between each you, one of those bouts. Yeah, so I catch my breath, I get ready to go, and then boom, another 15-second sprint. And I kind of repeat that. And now the key with this is you want that interval, right? You want that in-between sprints to give you enough time to kind of catch your breath, give you enough time to recover enough to exert maximal effort. Mm -hmm. What you don't want to do, and some people make this mistake with, with hit cardio, is they make the interval so short that it ends up becoming steady state cardio. It's just harder, a little harder than steady state cardio because they don't right. give themselves enough time to get ready to do that maximal effort again. So the numbers I gave can be different. It could be 15 seconds and two minutes, right? Depending on the person. But essentially... That's what it is. It's it's intense, all out by a period of recovery, active recovery, and then you do it again. That's why I've seen it get away from people is is that that whole recovery period of being able to be uh, compose yourself again to be able to exert uh, that kind of intense uh, force, and um, it, it it quickly can turn into just this 
uh, sloppy way of just trying to endure and get through the workout as mm-hmm. opposed to making sure that each exercise has that kind of intent where we need to get uh, as much out as we can in that short burst. And then we take that time to kind of regenerate and, and recompose. Yeah. You know, I'll give you an example, right? So to give you an example of like two types of athletes that might uh, one do more of a kind of hit style in their sport and one do like the more steady state. You look at long, long distance runners, obviously steady state, meaning they run the same speed for long periods of time. And the other one will be like soccer player, soccer players in a whole game run miles and miles and miles. Have you added up the miles that they ran? Mm -hmm. Tremendous amount of miles. They're always moving, but they're, but they're, they're not, they're, they're moving kind of uh, like this active recovery pace interrupted by these maximal yep. uh, effort exertions where they're sprinting and then they're kind of cruising and then they're sprinting and they're kind of cruising. The performance that a soccer player has stamina wise in the real world is very applicable compared to a long distance runner and their types of stamina. So mm-hmm. not saying one is necessarily better than the other, but mo- I'd say 99% of the clients that I trained that were interested in stamina and endurance would be more interested in the soccer players type of, uh, you know, stamina endurance, that conditioning mm-hmm. versus the distance runners type of energy, uh, sorry, stamina and endurance. So that's, that's the example of like hit versus, you know, the other types of cardio hit cardio. Also, I, like we said earlier, it preserves muscle. And in some cases, even it's builds a little bit of muscle because of the explosive, it, it, you know what it is? Hit training, hit cardio is like the strength training of the cardio world. Yeah. It really is. So if you want to, do you, think it, muscle. Do, you, do you think it's that the explosiveness of the training that is calling upon more muscle fibers mm-hmm. to actually yep. be explosive? You need more strength and or yeah. the, that you're doing such a minimal limited amount of time where you're actually elevating All your heart your rate. Buff. Right. I mean, that's really why it's so muscle sparing, right? So yep. it's important yep. that you understand that, right? The part of the reason why hit is so muscle sparing is one, you have an explosive movement that requires more muscle fibers. You recruit more muscle fibers. So then the body sends a signal, oh, we need to build more muscle mm-hmm. there. And then the other aspect is I'm only keeping my heart rate elevated for a short period of time before I let it come back down to rest again. So I'm not telling the body that, oh, we're going to be doing these long distance runs for extended period of time. It's only a short period of time. Mm-hmm. So the body doesn't adapt and pare down muscle. Yes. That has to be the reason why it's so it's, valuable in comparison. It's the, it's the quote unquote rest period. It's not really a rest period, but it's an active recovery recovery period. It's the short bursts of maximal effort. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's all of the above that makes it so muscle sparing in comparison uh, to the other. Just to paint a picture and a visual, right? You look at a a sprinter versus, you know, your endurance uh, marathon runner and just look at the body type that that typically produces. And so you just can see, well, why are there, it looks a bit more muscular on the side of the sprinter versus, you know, long distance runner. It's it's totally different uh, pursuits and the body will, will adjust based off of the stimulus you're providing. Yes. Now this next one is going to sound funny, but it's, it's so understated. And this one, I really saw the value in just as a trainer working with people. And that is to be active daily, but here's the more important part. Pick something that you enjoy doing. Yeah. There's so many cardi- types of activities. Let me let me take it back a little. There's so many types of activities that people enjoy doing that require a level, a certain level of stamina and endurance or that build stamina and endurance, like water skiing, swimming with your, your kids or your friends, hiking, playing with your Frisbee at the park or chasing each other, playing hide and go seek or playing soccer with your friends or, you know, though, you know, uh, rock climbing. Like there's so many activities that people enjoy doing that by them. you're just doing them because you love doing them and they're great ways to build stamina and endurance. And the reason why they're so great is because it's not working out. You get lost in it. You have, mm-hmm. a, you have a blast. Yeah. You have a lot of fun. Yeah. And this is key. If you want, and I always tell people this, like, okay, we, you've got your two or three days a week of strength training. You want to add cardio. My next question is, do you, is there anything you just enjoy doing that's active? That's your cardio. Do that. Go have fun doing just the find things you Find something enjoy. fun that yeah, it doesn't feel like work and it, it draws you back to, and you're moving your body continuously. And there's there's all kinds of forms of that it, that appeal to different people for different reasons. Uh, but there's a lot to pull from there, even if it's just going out for a hike all the time or being outside. Like for me, just I make a rule that I just I'm, I'm not able to be inside. If it's a nice day, there's no way I'm going to be inside. 
Like I have to figure it out outside. That usually promotes a lot more uh, just random activity in, in, in sports and things that I can find myself involved well, in. Well, this is why you never hear us tell the people that love to do these things to stop doing it just because we, we – because we all hear – people hear us talk about cardio and how it can be counterproductive sometimes with trying to build muscle or burn body fat. And then we'll get questions that come in that are like, oh, my God, well, I love to do this. I'm, I love to surf, and I'm going out. So yeah. And then they're like, should I stop doing that to to build this muscle or to no. burn this body fat? It's like, you'll never hear us say, don't do that. Like, if you love doing something that is active and physical, and you like, I'm never going to tell a client that. Stop surfing or stop going for your runs that you love to do. It's the, the audience that we're trying to speak to when we talk about that are the ones that weren't doing anything. They, they want to get in shape yeah. and they want to lose body fat or they want to build muscle and they've heard that they should do all this cardio to get there. Those are the people like, hold on, pump your brakes before you start doing all this extra activity that you don't need to do. Let's lay the foundation and strength training first before we start to introduce the cardio. It's not the person who loves to do this physical activity. If you love doing that, it's going to be a part of your life forever. Can maintain that. Yeah, yeah. and I'll, I'll give a personal example. So uh, I'm, I'm not a big uh, runner. Uh, that's no surprise. I don't enjoy it. I don't think it's very fun. <laughs> Hold your uh, laughter. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it's very fun. I never have thought it was very fun. But there, at one it's fun point, to watch though. Yeah, at, at one point in my life, um, I was really into jujitsu and judo, and I loved doing it. And I'd do it four days a week, and I'd show up to class, and I'd roll with people, and just had fun. And these are two two and a half hour classes, and I did them for a blast. So, and it was great. At that time, during that period of time, and I would do that. This was, I did this for at least it was like six or seven years. I was pretty consistent. And at the time, my my wife at the time, my ex-wife now, but my wife at the time had signed up for a half marathon and she trained for the half marathon and she ran for it and all that stuff. Anyway, I went to support her in the run and I said, and I never ran. All I did was jujitsu and judo four days a week. And I said, you know what? Let me, I'm going to do this with you because it sounds like a lot of fun and I didn't sign up for it. I'll stop if I need to. And I ran a half marathon and I ran the whole damn thing and it wasn't an issue. And I never ran. It was just, I did something that was fun that required stamina and endurance. I didn't look at it as like this way to build stamina and endurance. It was just this really fun activity. Now, these days it's hiking. I really enjoy going on really challenging hikes and I'm going to build more stamina and endurance doing that just because I'm going to be super consistent doing it. So again, this can't be, uh, I can't overstate this. You want to build stamina and endurance and burn more calories and be active. Um, don't look at the cardio machines as your way of doing it. Now that's one way to do it, but if that's boring as hell, I don't know. Look, I tell you what, I don't have, I've never had a single client that was like, my God, I got, you know, Oh, it's Sunday. I got some time. I think I'll go on the treadmill inside the, you know, the gym and just, you know, everybody I've ever worked with when it became to activity, it was always something else, something they enjoyed doing either a sport or something they enjoyed doing with friends and family. Pick something like that try doing that frequently. Great way to build stamina endurance. Um, and you'll be most consistent doing that. Now, the next one is one of my favorite ones to talk, talk about because I think it is the number one and biggest mistake that people make when doing cardio, especially when they're trying to lose body fat, oh. is nothing will make you pare down and lose muscle faster than not eating for performance and and training like a performance athlete oh or doing God. cardio. So mm -hmm. ramping up cardio activity while also reducing calories and nutrients, nothing will get muscle to disappear faster than that combination. And it is so common. Especially yeah. if you're not eating enough protein. I Look, I'm old enough to remember when endurance athletes were encouraged to eat tons of carbs, tons and tons and tons of carbs, because and it, it makes sense, right? Carbohydrates are an easy source of fuel, and energy, you need to burn glycogen in order to perform. So I'd get these clients and I'd look at their food, you know, to have them keep a food log. And, you know, I'm talking about a 150 pound male, you know, kind of endurance athlete. And he's having like 60 grams of protein in a day, 70, and like hundreds of grams of carbohydrates. And all I would do is I'd, you know, and sometimes I wouldn't even bump their calories. I would just say, you know what, we're going to trade hundred grams of carbs for hundred grams of protein, same calories. Let's see what happens. Performance would improve. They would get stronger. One of the best ways to protect yourself against muscle loss is to eat a high protein diet. Eat close to a gram of protein per pound of body weight. And of course, this is different from individual to individual. So sometimes that much protein affects people's digestion negatively, in which case you can bring it down. Studies will show that 0.6 grams per pound of body weight is probably enough to hit that kind of maximal amount of protein. But studies are very clear on this. 
a high protein diet, all things being equal, minimizes muscle loss and in some cases actually contributes to muscle gain, even in endurance athletes. So you got to eat, and this is one of the best things you could do when you're utilizing cardio, just like we say with, with strength training, fuel your body for those adaptations. That's going to make the fat loss much easier mm -hmm. versus you know, which everybody does. They do lots of cardio and they immediately cut their calories way down. Like you cannot send your body a louder signal that says, Hey, get rid of this right. metabolically active muscle. Right. You can't send a louder signal right than now. that right there. Well, right. this is where it becomes even more important when we talk about actually not wanting to see the scale move too much. Mm. Because if you're gonna enter, if you're gonna do a program where you're gonna introduce cardio and be training at the strength training at the same time, and your goal is fat loss, you really don't want to see that scale move that much, or else that there, it's it's a quick way that you to know that I'm probably paring down muscle. If you are eating like you're supposed to, feeding the body enough nutrients, giving it enough protein, like you're saying, and you're train strength training and you're lifting, and then you're also doing cardio in there, and the scale is starting to dip down, this is where it becomes a mind fuck for people. Because I came to you. You know, as a, as the client, and I said, you know, Justin, I really want to lose this this body fat, but I also want to be feel athletic, and I want yeah. to increase my stamina, so that's important to me. So I want to do cardio too. What does that look like? And then we start going, and I think we're doing a great job because I see the scale going down, and that's part of my goal. I told you that I want to lose fat, mm -hmm. so and I I I've made the connection to losing body fat or losing my belly to what's the weight on the scale, and so I think I'm doing the right things because that is going down. But in this case, this is where I'd be very careful is like, I don't want to see that if my, my client, I actually, I know if I'm strength training them properly, I'm feeding them properly and we're doing cardio, the scale doesn't have to be moving very much. I know I'm changing that body composition. Yeah, now I do want to be, mm -hmm. you also need to be clear, they're still getting smaller. Right. There's, there's a, a body composition change. Mm -hmm. So if you gain five pounds of muscle and burn five pounds of body fat, scale's the same, but here's the difference. Faster metabolism, stronger and smaller, smaller. Muscle takes up, I don't know, roughly something like three fourths maybe of the space that body fat does. So you've lost that much size, but the weight is the same, but you're harder in terms of how you feel, more sculpted. More defined. More defined and smaller. Yeah. I just had this happen with uh, my sister. She's been working out and she's fine. She's doing the weight. She's doing everything right. And I hadn't seen her in a while. I looked at her and I'm like, how much weight have you lost? She's like, you want to know something? She goes, the scale hasn't moved. Yeah. I'm like, I bet you're smaller. She goes, oh yeah, I'm definitely smaller. And I'm like, how many calories are you, are you able to eat now? She goes, I'm eating way more and I'm burning way more calories. Now, eventually, if you have a lot of body fat, eventually the scale starts to move down. But definitely initially, you want that body composition change to happen and you have to feed yourself appropriately in order to do that. Now, I'm always like, in terms of our last point, uh, really like trying to highlight this of a, a good approach of exercise selection to complement your cardio pursuits. And I'm always trying to get people to think in multiple planes and not always just in this yeah. one dimensional direction. So we, we do a lot of things in front of us uh, and we stay in this, this one plane of motion where, um, you know, our body is so much more capable of, of different directions and to be able to reinforce your joints by moving laterally, by rotating and twisting. So important to incorporate. Otherwise, you know, as we get this repetitive stress in just yeah. one specific type of movement, uh, it's just inevitable. We're going to face pain at some point. One of my favorite tools for, for this next point, which is what you're talking about functional exercises. And by the way, I hate the term functional because it's been used, misused it's been quite bastardized. a bit. It's like the only thing that really covers that. But yeah, yeah, but um, a tool I love for this is the sled. I love the sled. It's like strength training and stamina at the same time. Driving the sled, One pulling the, the sled. the best tools out there. Using, doing lateral movements. It's like you're sending a strength and muscle building signal simultaneously uh, at the same time, right? That you're sending an endurance and stamina signal, right? Now you can use barbells and dumbbells and cables and organize your strength training in a way that'll help do this as well. Functional exercises are typically not isolation, okay? And I say typically because I could definitely use an isolation exercise that'll improve someone's function if that's what they require. So all you you know trainers out there that want to you know pick on everything I say, yeah, of course. But generally speaking, functional exercises are gross motor movements, right? They involve most of the body. They're dynamic. They're not stuck. They definitely don't typically use machines. You're not stuck on a track moving in one particular way. Um, and it does. It, it uses all the different planes, right? It gives you strength and stamina in an applicable way to activities that you do outside in the real world. Like, 
for people who love stamina and endurance, for the people that ask us these questions, what they really want is they want to be able to do their favorite things better. Yeah. Like the surfer who asks us the question, you know, the questions about this, what they want is they want to be able to surf better. Yeah. They want to be able to surf longer right. mm -hmm. with less pain, right? Or the guy who's like, hey, I got kids and I want to be able to play at the park or coach their team and I want to be able to go run drills with them and not fall apart or be in a lot of pain, right? This is where functional exercises are so valuable because they allow you to do all those fun, stamina-based, endurance-based activities better and longer and with less pain this is where functional exercises you know play a big role well give me an example like let's take a let's take a either a surfer or take somebody who has a a type of you know sport they like to play and they want to improve and they also want to do some functional exercises that are going to benefit the 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 stamina cardio side of that what are some type of training modalities that you guys would do like what spe or specific exercises i should say yeah so obviously it depends on uh how we program the whole thing but i love the sled i like the sled because it's very functional it has a lot of carryover um you know uh, yeah, coaches you have seen. laterally you can drag and pull it so you're yes. you know you're getting a lot of posterior work too so it's it's very versatile in terms of like being able to kind of cover uh, all those different types of, of planes of movement and get and add volume right. uh, to to your training to be able to have that kind of strength and, and build what we call work capacity. Yes, so, yes. Complexes are good where you're doing like three. Yeah. Slow you know, risk too, right? So that's another benefit. Multiplanar yes. lunges, amazing. Yes. Uh, complexes are great too where you're doing like three X. And I, I want to be careful with this because you can, programming is very important when you string exercises together, CrossFit early on proved how bad <laughs> programming could be when you string exercises together, yeah. when they would put Olympic lifts in the middle of a you know circuit and people would get hurt and stuff like that. So complexes can be very valuable. Like if you put the right three exercises or the right combination of movements together, you, they benefit each other. You get the stamina and endurance and you also get a strength signal with it as well. I'm glad you brought that up because I remember there'd be times where I'd be training some a, a client just like this, and we would run like you know, I mean, whether you call them um, tri sets or giant giant sets where you're doing multiple exercises, mm -hmm. kind of like a, a circuit base. And I'd get people coming over. This is right when when CrossFit was really getting popular and stuff, and people come over like, "Oh, are you training them CrossFit?" I get I used to get so irritated and so mad because <laughs> we I wasn't CrossFit, but people just started to. Think that every time you do multiple exercises, anything that, was functional was basically yeah. If it was a fun, it, if yeah. it was a functional movement and done in you know in consecutive order with another exercise, right? Then oh, you must be doing CrossFit or whatever. It's like no, that's not, not no. What, what we're doing. But I mean, there there's some things that they were on the right track for. I think yes. with with the the way they originally started programming. I think the the mistakes were to the point you made, Sal was. You know, they did some really technical lifts that they would throw in the middle of these really taxing type of exercises or runs. And that's where you you increase the risk so much that even though you're getting great benefits from from training this way, the the risk versus reward isn't worth yeah. it. And there's ways to to reap those same benefits by programming differently. Yes. And also, you know, using a a tool in the wrong way, like, for example, explosive training. Explosive training really can build your, your ability to generate force and speed. However, if I take an explosive exercise and I put it in a complex, it loses all value. Now I'm just jumping. Now I'm just getting tired, right? And this is what you would see with CrossFit or you would see with people who put complexes together. So how you program your exercises together uh, makes a big, big difference when we're talking about complexes. But if you do it right... You get the, you know, you get the muscle building effect. You get the stamina effect. It's functional, and the risk of injury uh, is really low. And now this is not a point, but I do want to also comment on this: that one thing that can improve your cardio, stamina, and endurance is improving your mobility and your stability as well. Uh, when you look at, for example, and I'll use an analogy. Let's say I'm I'm, I'm putting a car together and trying to to maximize my quarter mile. Okay, one thing that you look at when you're trying to do this is. Am I losing any power? Am I leaking any power in ways where it's gonna, it's not going to be able to put the the power to the tires to the pavement? An easy example would be a car with a lot of horsepower that can't grip the road, right? Lots of power lost because uh, I'm not able to get fast because my tires are spinning in place. Mobility and stability work does that for your body so that when you're running or rock climbing or surfing, 
You don't get these losses of power, uh, these losses of stamina. Trying Provides to that traction, that stability, that uh, you're able to then kind of generate more force because your body is capable of doing that. This is why studies will show this. This is really weird, right? But an, an experienced athlete will burn less calories than an inexperienced athlete doing the same activity. Yeah. You would think it's, well, how does that make sense? Well, because experienced athletes become good efficient. Mm -hmm. and efficient and yeah. technical. So mobility works very important uh, also. And I do want to make sure I communicate that. Now, here's what we did, right? So we just covered some points about cardio, how to do it right, how to m minimize muscle loss, or, or in some cases, build a little bit of muscle. But this requires programming and you know some people just want it all done for them. So here's what we did is we put together finally a cardio program. It's called MAPS Cardio. So MAPS Cardio is designed to build strength, stamina, endurance, give you a better uh, gas tank. This is for people who, again, like to be active and do all these athletic endeavors, also doesn't want to lose muscle, somebody who doesn't want the metabolism slowdown that can come from doing excessive cardio. We designed this for people who like to do those things. So that's what we have with MAPS Cardio. In the program, you have workouts, with strength training, you have cardio workouts, so you can use cardio machines, you could do some of the stuff outdoors, and we've included uh, days in there where you get to do your favorite activity as part of your workout. So mm -hmm. if you like to swim, if you like to run, if you like to row, if you like to rock climb, there's programmed in this program those days. Yeah. So you don't have to give up your favorite activity to follow one of our programs, which is a critique that we would sometimes get with some and of our there's other a literal mobility class that runs you all the way through um, some of the best moves that will help to enhance your body through these right. uh, cardiovascular pursuits. Right. Now, we also did this uh, with the new, because it's a brand new program. We're just launching it. We also did this uh, because uh, people are going to be interested in maximizing stamina endurance by improving the VO2 max, which we covered a little bit. And then we talked about the nutrition part. Always lots of questions with nutrition. We wrote two ebooks, okay? VO2 Max, how to boost that, and a book on how to eat for performance. These ebooks uh, eventually will be sold on their own. They'll be like $47 ebooks. But what we're going to do with this launch is we're going to throw them in for free. So you get Maps Cardio on its launch, and you're also going to get the two ebooks for free. Also, because it's a launch, the price is discounted. So instead of $117, which is how much it's going to cost normally, it's going to be 77 bucks. So for $77, you'll get MAPS Cardio full workout, cardio-based type workout, including strength training, mobility, cardio workouts, all that stuff. Plus those two eBooks I talked about, how to boost your VO2 max, how to eat for performance, which are included, all for that price right there. And that's this launch. This launch uh, special ends July 3rd. And if you want to get yourself started or just learn more about it, Go to mapscardio.com and then the code for all the stuff that I talked about, the free ebooks and the discounted price is cardio special with no space. So cardio special and you'll get all that stuff hooked up for you. The rules that apply to somebody who is going from, a man who's going from 20% body fat to 15%, the rules that apply to that person are the same as the, the rules same. that go from 10% to 5%. The difference is everything that we talked about.